What's going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Fall is officially here, but the harvests, they haven't even slowed down. And the tomato plants have grown into tomato trees. So it's time for another harvest. Let's go! Let's jump right into the harvesting. We'll start off with this old Polish variety, the Soldaki. Look at the size of these ones. Let's grab a couple of these. This is like, oh man, just so beautiful. I've talked about this tomato a lot. This is one of the best sandwich tomatoes there are. So good. We've got a lot to harvest here though, so we're gonna get a couple of these. It's always known to be a good producer for me late into the season. We'll get another one here. And then let's get these two in the back. Let's get this one here. Even though it's not perfectly ripe, it's getting there. And then let's get this one right here. So you can see one plant. Look at that, incredible. I'm gonna bring you over to the tomato plants that have literally turned into tomato trees. I just gotta grab a few more things in this section because there's a lot to grab here like this old Cherokee Indian variety, also known as Cherokee Purple. And this is a good reliable one, producing for me uh, late as well. So I'm happy with this one. Look at them, more on this side too. <laughs> this one's kind of like, I allowed it to sprawl on the ground, but you'll notice even though I let it sprawl, it's doing well because it's on top of wood chips. It's just not on top of the dirt. So that's really good. And here's the Rosa de Burn. This is an excellent tomato too. Delicious flavor to it. And look at that color, just beautiful. So we'll grab this one as well. And it's fall, we're getting all these beautiful harvests from the tomatoes. Feels like it's never ending sometimes. Look at this. Oh my gosh, let me bring you over here. And there's someone getting a new roof in, so there's a little nailing going on in the background, but I still felt like I needed to sh share this with you guys. Look at this Hungarian heart. This thing has just gotten massive. This is one of the biggest, most beautiful tomatoes I think I've ever grown. Look at the size of it. Like this is bigger than any fruit that I grew the whole year, like fruit tree. And then my tomatoes are taller than fruit trees. So they're like literally trees. Check this out. Tuck's going for one of the cucumbers. Probably wants one of these young ones. We'll get him one of the ones here. Or it looks like he wants to get his own. He's got his own little cuke. We'll let him snack on that. While he's snacking on that, we'll grab some of our own. Like this one here. I know I've got more. Another one over here. And then grab this Hungarian heart. Another one beautiful and uh, let's get this Cherokee purple and this one and this one so just from that plant <laughs> this is why we grow food in our backyard it's the possibilities are endless this is a great season extending cucumber I love this thing this one's called the silver slicer and it's known to be a good producer late into the season like late into September and it's proven to be so one of the reasons I think is because it resists powdery mildew. So at the end of the season, powdery mildew likes to come and kill some of our stuff off like you can see in here. But with a silver slicer, it's resistant to that. It's got a good mild flavor and just incredibly productive. So an overall keeper without a doubt. Plus, I think these white cucumbers actually make it easier to find them. Because sometimes the cu cucumber plants like to hide the cucumbers, but when they're white, they really stand out. So let me put this down here and uh, come, come check out all the stuff we got real quick. This is just... In this one little section, look at this, absolutely beautiful. But I wanna bring you over to the pineapple tomato because that thing is just absolutely massive and I wanna cut into it and show you how beautiful the thing actually is. Now, let's grab some of these pineapple tomatoes right here. These things are huge. The biggest tomatoes I've grown, I think even bigger than the Hungarian hearts. Let's grab this one first. This one, this one is like perfect, look at this thing. Massive and look at that. Oh my gosh, look how striking and beautiful that is. These are so beautiful when you cut into them too. So what I wanna do is grab this one right here and cut into it. This is even way bigger than that one, look at this. But it's got some damage on it. So I just wanna cut into it now to show you what it looks like. But man, that thing is just absolutely beautiful. Let me grab a cutting board right here. And then I just wanna show you, this thing is just insane. It's just, look how much food that's gonna to be too. This thing is gonna be a nice slicer, but let's see. Oh my gosh, look at that. that. That makes you not even almost want to eat it, how beautiful it is. So on the, in the uh, pictures in the magazine or something, they cut it like this, and then in like this, I think. So, even Tuck wants to look at that. Look how beautiful that thing is, the flesh and everything. That's insane. So we're gonna eat on this tomato. After this video, we'll eat this thing, make some sandwiches out of it or something. But let's keep harvesting because we got a lot more stuff to grab and put into this old basket. This one's got a few more days on it, so we'll just let it go. But I want to bring you over to these Suli pears. This is an Asian pear, 
although it doesn't look like it. So they're ripe, they just started falling to the ground and I've had some, they're delicious. So although it doesn't look like it, this is an Asian pear and it's known to be one of the better tasting Asian pears with you know a good smell and stuff. So I've had them, they're really good, but these are the ones that fell, that's when I like grabbing them. Let's take a bite and just see how good it actually is. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Incredibly juicy ripe just such a good flavor and we're just gonna grab all these these only fell over the last two days so i bet if i come out tomorrow or something there more will fall off after some wind so we'll just let them fall off on their own i shook it nothing else came off so we'll just leave them grab this beautiful gift and then keep going because man what a beautiful tree this thing is this is only its fourth year too and <laughs> let's check out the tomato trees now look at this Tell me this thing hasn't turned into tomato tree. If we come over on this side, you'll be able to see the, the uh, apples next to it too. It just looks crazy. Like the stalk on this thing is just this thick. Look at it. Look at the size. This thing's maybe 14, 15 feet. Look at my apple tree right next to me. <laughs> it's bigger than my apple tree. So it's actually a tomato tree. I mean, if you want to grow tomatoes like this, there's a, is a reason we do it. It's you can see all the space we're getting out of it, that extra space, but it's also getting it up off the ground to get a lot more airflow and light. So it's not getting many diseases and it's just completely loaded. Look at this. I gotta grab all the way up here to get these tomatoes. Check out the other one next to me too. This thing has gotten so tall and it's gotten top heavy because I pruned some of the lower things. So it's just bending over and essentially cracking this, uh, this steak, but that's okay. It's just a piece of bamboo. We'll get more next year. But look at that, tell me that's not an actual tomato tree. And it's bigger than my apple tree, which is producing apples. And we should actually grab a couple of apples while we're at it. It's not a bad idea. Let's grab one of these. This is the Bell Mac. Check out on this side how, look, and you can see the tomatoes in there. Look, maybe we'll grab this one. Ooh. Oh yeah. And I've shown you before, but I love shining these apples because it's incredible how much different it looks after it's shined up. So pre-shine, post-shine. <laughs> That's no joke, look at that. Incredible, but we got more stuff to grab. I like getting these apples just like one or two every day because it, it just uh, extends the harvest. I get to eat them fresh and I just love doing it like that. And we've got just a lot more stuff to get, to be honest with you. And we've got the pink tongue eggplants here. We'll grab a few of these real quick. Beautiful. We've got the Cubanelle semi-sweet peppers. This one's got a little bite in it, it looks like, but that's okay. We've got the Cubanelle semi-sweet peppers right here. The one that Tuck dug underneath. This has got to be like the most productive pepper that I've ever grown. And if you want to grow a productive pepper, get these in the ground. It's a good frying pepper, good cooking pepper because the walls on it are so thin, so it cooks up quick. So it's, a, it's got a good flavor to it too. I really enjoy it. The Jimmy Dard Nardello too, that one's known to be one of the most delicious uh, flavored peppers. But I got more peppers I wanna show you in the other garden after we grab some more eggplants. So let's get some eggplants here. And the eggplants right here, they're some of my favorite ones. I prefer to grow these, the Rosa Bianca, as opposed to the Black Kings. I mean, I do grow some Black Kings, but I always grow more of the Rosa Biancas because I think they're more beautiful and they have good flavor. I mean, chefs love using these too. So it's a, it's a, looks beautiful, tastes excellent. And it's just a great one. Another one back here, even bigger actually. So these plants are real nice producers for us. You'll notice as you look, look down here, I came by and I put compost underneath the base of them in like midsummer. That helped uh, give them some fertilizer that will allow them to produce later into the season. So it's like that added nutrition a little late and it trickles down as it rains. Then I'm gonna grab these eggplants right here. One here. And then we'll grab another one back here. This one got a little big on us. So got a little big, but that's okay. Still beautiful. Get that into there. And then before we get into the other garden, we have a few more things to grab. Like back here, you may not even kind of really be able to see it, but let me just bring you over. Look how well some of our brassicas are doing too. The next round of things. And take a peek into there too, look at the lettuce. This lettuce is almost ready to harvest. So even though it's fall, we're still harvesting summer things because we're extending our summer season. But we're also gonna be harvesting some fall stuff soon too. And look at these cucumbers. <laughs> more cucumbers over here. And more over here. So let's grab these cukes. 
looking pretty good in this garden and let's move them to the other food forest. Let's grab some more peppers now. We'll grab them from the old food forest. Check out this raised bed. Look at the color of the peppers and how productive they are. This is exactly what we want to see. We'll start out by grabbing some of these Gilboa orange peppers. Look at them in the center there. Look how beautiful they are. The color, the, the orange versus the dark green, it just, it's insane. It looks so beautiful. I love it. And like I had mentioned, the Cubanelle semi-sweet, like this one right here, here's a Cubanelle semi-sweet. These are known to have thinner walls, so they're good for like a frying and a cooking. These have those like thick, crunchy walls, so this thing is good for fresh eating too. So let's grab a couple more of these Gilbo oranges. A few more of those guys. Put them there. Actually, let's get them into the bowl where they belong, or this guy's gonna end up stealing them. <laughs> right, boy? We'll put these ones in. And then let's move around this backside. We've got some red Marconi and we've got uh, some Jimmy Dardellos over here. So this Jimmy Dardello variety looks like it's a, just a little bigger. This phenotype is a little bigger than the other one. I have a little wider, which is nice. We'll grab a few of these because we know the environment's gonna affect the way things grow. So even different microclimates will affect the way different kinds of, um, even the same variety of pepper will grow. So let's get some of these. These are the red Marconis, not perfectly ripe, but this one's a little better. Look at that. Oh, the flavor on these is just so good. And then we'll have some more Criollo de Cocinas back there. But I have another location where I have some Criollo de Cocinas planted too. I want to show you something that's cool though. Right over here. The amount of bird's nests that have come into the garden this year, is, it's been crazy. It's just more and more nests every time I look. So here's a new one up here. In the This is the apple tree that we grew from seed, the Prigioni apple. But in there, they're actually eating some of the Prigioni apples. And I think that's pretty cool how they're like eating some of the food that we grew from seed, the apple tree. So it's just, it's just something that gives me another reason to come out here, to know that some of the things that I'm growing and something that I started even from seed that like the birds and nature are enjoying it even as much as I am. So I think it's really cool. Let's grab some of these apples. This one right here is the Liberty apple, one of the most disease resistant apple trees on the planet. And it's still loaded with apples, a good late producer. So I love that it's fall and we're still getting these fresh fruits right off the trees. And we're gonna be getting stuff much later with the persimmons. That thing actually came off pretty easy. Look at the color on that. That thing is just so beautiful. Let me, let me shine this one too so we get just a little bit of that shine. That's the before. Look at that after. <laughs> That's crazy. So beautiful. Oh, it's just incredible. I mean, just looking at it brings me joy. And watching it grow and eating it, it's, uh, the whole process is really fun. So let's grab a few more things though. And one thing I want to show you is the size of these tomatoes right here too. Look at this. I wasn't kidding when I said that these tomato plants have actually turned into tomato trees. I mean, it's got a thick stalk. I pruned it like you would a tree. All the stuff's just up top and the fruit is, this fruit's way higher than the, the apple tree was. So again, we're next to an apple tree and the tr apple tree is smaller than my tomato trees loaded with fruit. This is, uh, it's so fun. It just, I think it's really cool. But I'm gonna grab some of these. I'm not gonna waste too much of your time doing that because it's pretty obvious. Let me get some of these lemon boys and take a peek under here on this side on actually how many there still are. I've been harping on season extension and growing some hybrids that are disease resistant to get the good harvest late because that's kind of why you want these in here. They don't taste maybe as good as some of the heirlooms, but you have those heirlooms like the Soldaki and the Rosa de Burn to make sure you get the good flavored ones. And you have these hybrids to extend your season. So when you could grow plants, not only for their beauty, for their flavor, but also for their function, it adds another element that I think helps to increase the overall harvest. So I don't even know if I can get at some of these ones. They're so tight in here. Let me just grab this one. Pretty good looking. And, uh, and we'll get this big one back here. Oh yeah, this is a good one. If I can get it off. Cool, that's a nice one. That's really nice. A little bit of a mark right there, but still absolutely beautiful. Now, I just wanna take you back to one more spot in this pallet bed because I wanna show you some of the tomatoes, but even more than that, I wanna show you the insane amount of Marnock butterfly larvae that's back here. It's, they've literally eaten all my old carrots. But look at these tomatoes here. Look at these ones. Oh my gosh, these are so cool. I can't think of the name this second, but I'll, I'll put the name in. Oh yeah, Pink Bumblebee. Look, look. Love the streaking on that. That's so cool. So that's just an absolutely beautiful tomato. I wonder if I can get like a large beefsteak one that had that kind of striping. That would be really cool. And then let's get these Jimmy Nardellas down here. So I'm always sticking things in extra. 
uh, peppers and stuff. People don't realize how well some peppers can grow in a, in a partial shade. I've even mentioned that in one of my videos, but let's swing around. I just wanna show you this one more thing. And it's really cool because this bed has, this kind of goes back to what Bill Mollison says. If you come around this side, I'll show you. This bed has a high level of uh, yield in regards to tomatoes. I've got a lot of tomatoes out of it. I mean, everywhere I look, there's more. Here's another uh, black Cherokee purple, beautiful. But it's also got this other yield now of monarch butterflies. So coming close, look at the carrots. They've been absolutely decimated. But as we look close, right, follow my finger and you'll see, we've got one here, little monarch butterfly larvae here. Let's go up here. We've got more little baby ones. Another one over here. The other day I came out and I counted 10. So they're eating all the carrots, but that's gonna be so cool. In a small amount of time, there's just gonna be even more monarch butterflies than there were. Loving the zinnias, uh, soaking everything in, and just, it's kind of painting the picture of what I talked about in the past, how this is actually a paradise for everybody and everything. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Here's the harvest. This isn't even all of it, but I just wanted to give you a picture of what we did get. Monster tomatoes, pineapple tomatoes, silver slicer cucumbers, apples, orange peppers. It's just, uh, it's such a blessing to be a part of. Fresh pears in the back, so anyone can do this if you have the space and you have the opportunity. That's why me and Tuck love making these videos. And I always say me and Tuck because this guy is truly a leader out here. He's a master gardener and he's, we learn everything from this guy, so he's the best. He's the king of getting ear infections, but he's still always out here, snacks on everything. And look at the, look at the, as I'm always making the videos, he's always like snacking on peppers. Look, he stole the pepper took a couple bites of it, left it. So he's always leaving like uh, remnants of them. So it's fun. He's always a piece of the garden and a piece of the video. So we love that about him so much. I want to thank Tashira Smith. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow and starting a membership. It means a lot to me and Tuck that you're willing to give back. And I hope I pronounce your name close to right. And we also want to thank everyone who's giving super thanks for the channel. That means a lot to me and Tuck also. So again, we just want to say thank you. Before we let you go though, you got to hit the like button, the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. And you, I know you hear the uh, people doing roof work in the background. That's because I live in a suburban neighborhood. This isn't a big backyard. People always think that it's huge. I grow on about one ninth of an acre total. We just pack things in and we use the height, which gives us such a incredible amount of space. And then we also just follow principles and then constantly refining. So it's not a lot of space. And I think the, the nailing in the background is kind of like, you know, it's just a piece of suburbia. So me and Tuck will catch you in the next one. The leader, the boss, the master, the king of the garden, Big Tuck and his apprentice James will be back to you again real soon. We out.